Hello everyone, I'm Em, welcome out Attack Block. Today we're going to be continuing on from where we left off in the previous video. We basically upgraded the PC by adding some Corsair Light Loop fans, a triple pack here, as well as the Lighting Node Pro that came with this. So all of those are installed. We also upgraded three of the intake fans with the Arctic P12 PWM, like white transparent fans. These are lovely, these are all in the PC. If you wanna go watch the actual like PC build video, uh, press on the card right there I think and that should take you to the PC upgrading video and then we also added the uh, WD Black NVMe M.2 SSD 250 gigabytes capacity here pretty cool little drive this is just mainly going to be used for Adobe Premiere stuff and editing videos uh, but that's pretty much all the upgrades that we did yesterday and if you watched till the very end of that video you probably noticed that I uh, forgot to plug in the like USB 2.0 header for like NZXT's Kraken cooler and all the like RGB lighting effects and stuff. The pump itself and the cooler is working fine, it's just that we can't control any of the RGB lighting effects, nor are they turned on in the first place. So the Kraken cooler has no RGB, which of course is a big problem. So we're gonna be fixing that today. Luckily I have one of these little devices here from NZXT. Uh, this is basically like an internal USB 2.0 header hub that you can put inside of your PC. We have two normal like, USB 2.0 ports uh, right there, as well as like actual USB headers that you can plug stuff like, you know, the Corsair Lighting Node Pro into uh, the NZXT Kraken Cooler, like, you know, stuff like that really. So this is gonna be coming in handy. And I bought this like probably half a year ago or something when I bought my NZXT H700 IPC case. But we're basically just gonna be using this little guy to add some more USB 2.0 headers in the actual system so that we can have the Corsair Lighting Node Pro plugged in as well as the Kraken cooler and we'll have one more slot left as well for you know anything else we might need to plug in the future. And then we're gonna be going over some of Corsair's lighting effects as I kind of went over them myself just briefly, uh, checked out a bunch of the effects on the Corsair light loop fans and they're pretty good. And I'm sure you guys are actually gonna be impressed since Corsair's like RGB is I'd say a lot more customizable than I thought was gonna be possible. It's honestly really good and the cooling and performance of the fans so far is uh, pretty good so far there. They can get loud at full speed, but if you set them to like ultra silent mode, I guess, then they're nice and quiet, you pretty much can't even hear them. And that's of course real good. So we're gonna go over the lighting effects of these fans as well as thermal performance of these fans and the Arctic fans versus the Game Max Chroma fans that we were using in the system earlier. And uh, unfortunately, they weren't really moving much air uh, in the system and there was no way for me to actually control the fan speed so that's kind of the main reason I replaced them plus I want to get into overclocking that actual CPU and my graphics card once I go ahead and upgrade it uh, so having better airflow in the case and better temperatures is gonna help and uh, of course lower noise levels as well when the system is set to silent mode is always welcome so with all that said let's take the PC upgrade it with this little guy from NZXT and I also bought myself a brand new sleeved white cable here from Shack Mods. I picked this up on Amazon for like six or seven pound, I think. It arrived in a few days. And uh, this is just like an extension cable for like CPU power, as that motherboard has an eight pin EPS ATX connector for your CPU power and a four pin as well. So I only had like an eight pin extension. Uh, so now I picked up a four pin extension, a sleeved extension cable from Shack Mods so that we can have all the sleeved cables in the system. Everything's going to look real nice. We don't want any like, you know, default power supply cables. Will the PC boot up? Oh yeah, and the Kraken cooler is plugged in. Everything seems to be fine, guys. All right. Luckily, the upgrades are going well so far. Uh, we haven't broken the PC just yet. There, there we go. Uh, for some reason, we're using this monitor now instead of that one. Interesting. Will the BenQ monitor turn on? Will that monitor turn on? We got ROG right here. That is what we want to be seeing. Soundbar is on. Everything is on. Um, this don't look right at all. <laughs> What? Thank you. There we go. That is what we want to be seeing. <laughs> all right, so the PC is all booted up. Everything is working. The NZXT Kraken cooler is all functioning once again. The RGB is all fixed. Everything's plugged in pretty much. And uh, on the screen, you can probably see that I have the Corsair IQ software downloaded. And this is what we're going to be using to actually control the lighting effects 
on these fans. So in this software, like all I did, I guess, is I went onto home, I pressed on the lighting node pro, I pressed on lighting setup, then I actually set all this up. So this is all like really simple. All I did is I selected light loop RGB series fans by pressing here. And then I selected how many fans are actually connected to the like light loop series fans controller thingy. Uh, so I pressed free as we do have free uh, light loop fans connected. And that was pretty much it for the setup. I then pressed on light channel one. In terms of lighting effects, we have quite a lot to choose from. We have like rainbow wave, uh, we have spiral rainbow. So I'm gonna show you a few of these as they're all pretty unique and you know, they're all pretty cool. We have rainbow, which is kind of like one single color for all the fans and stuff. It looks pretty cool. Uh, color shift. But for most of these effects, you can also like customize all the settings and stuff. So this is currently set to random colors. However, you can set it to alternating by selecting two different colors. And you can also adjust the speed of the effect. So you can make it real quick. Uh, so it's currently just like a uh, red and blue. Uh, so that, that actually looks pretty sick. Uh, then we have like a uh, color pulse. Pretty sick. Uh, this is currently set to random colors, as you can see here. Uh, we have a color wave. Like, holy crap, dude, that's awesome. Uh, we have sequential. Ooh, look at that. That's crazy, right? We have like strobing, which, you know, it's it's a strobe light pretty much. Uh, we have rain, like, these effects are definitely like really in depth. Like, look at this and the detail that goes into all these and stuff is really quite impressive. We have a marquee, which uh, I'm not a fan of this because it kind of looks laggy, but let's see if we can speed that up. No, that, that still looks pretty horrible. Uh, temperature, so this is gonna be uh, based on the temperature of either our CPU or our GPU. So this is uh, the total package temperature of like our CPU. We're currently, I guess, in between 40 and 60 degrees. So probably like 50 degrees as we're currently like in the orange. The color green is for 20 degrees. The color yellow is for 40 degrees and stuff. Let's select the graphics card. See how we're doing there. I think we're around 40 degrees on the graphics card temperature, but that's, you know, pretty cool effect. You can have a rough idea of guess of what the temperatures are of your system whilst you play games and stuff which is pretty cool we have arc let's see what this is Ooh, god damn dude. these are like really cool uh so we can select the inner ring and outer ring to be two different things you can select the colors we can increase the speed make this like real crazy and stuff we, we can select counterclockwise like this is crazy dude uh, we got heartbeat which is kind of like these strobe or like a pulse but it's kind of like to a heartbeat it looks pretty cool i, I like this effect we got pong what on earth is pong <laughs> what? And then we have like color warp. Oh my lord. What just happened there? Whoa, dude. That's that's crazy. So that's pretty much like all the Corsair lighting effects for the uh, light loop fans from Corsair. They're all pretty cool. I like these fans a lot. Uh, I'm going to definitely play around with like setting up actual fan profiles and stuff over the next couple of days uh, to just like optimize the silence, I guess, as well as performance based on like the temperature and stuff of the system. However, at the moment, I'm currently experiencing some really strange issues with ASUS's AI Suite 3 software. If I adjust the fan speed, my PC kind of turns off, like with no warning. It doesn't shut down. It just turns off, completely just dies. Now I'm pretty sure this isn't because of like the fans or anything. I have a feeling this is probably like software related, if not hardware uh, with like the motherboard or maybe even the power supply somehow freaking out when I adjust fan speed, which to me makes no sense at all. But you never really know, to be honest. I still have the Game Max, the 1050 watt power supply in there. Uh, I mean, everything works fine, apart from this little weird issue that I'm gonna probably dive into more if I can't resolve it. Maybe you guys can help me out again. I'll do some Google searches, I'll look around, see maybe if this is like a common problem or something. But the ASUS AI Suite 3 software turns my PC off if I adjust the fan speed. So um, hopefully I can get this resolved pretty soon. Now that that's all been said, let's get into actual temperature testing of this new fan configuration uh, in comparison to the previous one we had on the system, which was the Game Max Chroma fans that were in there. And uh, I could not control the fan speed of those fans as they did not plug into the motherboard directly and they did not plug into like a fan controller of any kind really. Uh, so fan speed was not controllable at all. On top of that, they didn't really move much air in my opinion, which of course is a problem, especially in like a case like this, I guess. Let's jump into actual temperature testing of this system. Basically the before and after results of this fan configuration with the Arctic P12 PWM fans as intake and the Corsair RGB light loop fans as exhaust. 
So I've got three Corsair Light Loop fans and three Arctic P12 PWM fans in there versus the Game Max Chroma fans that I had a total of six of. In the system, the exact same orientation. The only thing I'm really changing here is the fans and uh, the fan speed on these fans. I can't adjust anyway as if I do, my PC turns off. All right, so I'm back. I've gathered all the data and stuff for all these temperature testing, all the FPS testing I did. Uh, so this is my first time ever using like Hardware Monitor Pro to gather data, uh, just log all the like temperature numbers and stuff uh, from the CPU and GPU, put it all into an Excel spreadsheet, gather the averages and stuff, put it into Adobe Illustrator, make a graph, put it into Adobe Photoshop, improve the graph and stuff, add titles and stuff and a legend. And uh, this is my first time ever doing this type of thing, so bear with me, and I apologize if it's awful, but hopefully it'll only get better from here, as I'm gonna be doing a lot more like graphs and stuff in the future, actual like testing of components and stuff. So, here we have the first result for ADA64 system stability test. I ran this for a total of 15 minutes across both of these like configurations, I guess, with fans. Uh, we have two legends here, Game Max Chroma fans in the like dark green, I guess. And then we have the Corsair Light Loop Plus Arctic PWM fans in the light blue color here. So, for the average CPU temperature recorded across 15 minutes on ADA64 system stability test with only the CPU box checked, we had an average CPU temperature of 58.3 degrees Celsius on the Corsair Plus Arctic fan setup, whereas on the Game Max Chroma fans, we had an average CPU temperature of 60.2 degrees Celsius, a difference of 1.9 degrees Celsius. So not the biggest drop in CPU temperature, only like, you know, two degrees roughly, but it is still a difference and you know, the fans in general are a lot better now in my opinion. We can control the RGB and stuff on the Corsair Light Loop fans. They look amazing. Plus we can also control the fan speed on the Corsair and Arctic fans. However, we have to fix the problem with AI Suite 3 before we can do that, because at the moment the PC turns off if we adjust fan speed, which is pretty weird. Moving on to the next graph here from Unigen Heaven Benchmark 4.0. I ran this on the Extreme preset on both configurations here. And as you can see, we have a difference of almost three degrees Celsius on this configuration. Now, average GPU temperature here, 76.2 degrees Celsius on the Corsair plus Arctic fan setup. Whereas on the Game Max Chroma fans, we had an average GPU temperature of 78.9 degrees Celsius. So a difference of like 2.7 degrees Celsius there, which is always good. This is kind of what I expected as the intake fans are pointing directly at the GPU. So I did expect the GPU to actually drop in temperature quite a bit more than I expected the CPU to drop in temperature as well. But you know, pretty nice little result here. Uh, moving on to the next result, which is the actual like FPS numbers and the score on Unigen Heaven. This is what we got. So the FPS and score that we got on Unigen Heaven benchmark didn't really change at all. Going from one configuration to the other. As you can see on the results here, minimum FPS difference is 0.2 FPS and then the average FPS difference was 0.1 FPS and the, the max FPS we somehow managed to hit 166.1 in both configurations and the score is pretty much the exact same. All the numbers here are pretty much the exact same. There's almost no difference whatsoever. Going from the Game Max Chroma fans to the Corsair Plus Arctic fan setup here. There's pretty much no difference in actual FPS numbers, but there is a clear difference in CPU temperature as well as GPU temperature uh, going from one configuration to the other. There is also a slight improvement in noise levels going from the Game Max fans over to Corsair and Arctic. So the system just sounds ever so slightly quieter and the temperatures are ever so slightly lower as well. Right, so apart from all that, thank you all so much for watching this far into the video and I'll have everything linked that I talked about in today's video in the video description down below. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.